Hi, welcome to the studio. Where the heck have you guys been anyway? It's been like months since I've seen you. I'm kidding, it's been my fault. A few months ago I made a video about these concho making kits and uh, it, it got a little crazy after that. I've been doing nothing but making those concho making kits. So thank you for your support on that project and uh, things have finally started to cool down and slow down a little bit from that, that flurry of activity. So I thought today we would turn our attention to engraving a ring. You know, engraving is uh, pretty, uh, I don't know, it's pretty easy when you are engraving on a flat surface, but when you, when you move from a flat surface to a torus shape, you have to constantly be changing the angle of the graver as it meets the metal because the, the angle of the metal is always changing. And then when you further complicate that by having a radius uh, this way as well as this way, as in when you're engraving a ring that, that has uh, kind of a half round shape, then it, it makes it a, a three dimensional challenge to be able to do a, a good consistent line through that metal. But anyway, that's one of the challenges. The other challenges of engraving a ring are work holding. And then finally, the last thing about engraving a ring is um, that makes it difficult or at least different than and when you're working in two dimensions is figuring out how to lay out the work, how to lay out your design on that shape rather than a flat shape. So I'll show you some of the tricks that, that I know and maybe you'll pick something up new. I hope that is the case anyway. That's always my hope with my videos is that uh, I'm able to show you something that maybe you didn't know before and that you can incorporate it into your work and hopefully pass it on, pay it forward if you will. So let's get to engraving a ring. Okay, let's hop onto the computer and I'm gonna to go to my website under rings and show you what I'm thinking about as a design for the rings that we have to engrave. This is a design that I, it's called the Texican and I do it often on rings that are much wider than the rings that I have to work with now. So I'm gonna to have to make some modifications to the design, but I, I really wanna stay with this look. The customer likes this design as well. And this is what she and he are hoping for. So I'm gonna probably just keep a screenshot of this up on my computer so I can refer to it from time to time. And let's hop into Illustrator. I want to, let's start with the men's ring. I want to measure the diameter with my digital calipers. Diameter is 22.45 millimeters. So 22.45. Multiply that times 4.1 or 3.14, which is pi. And that will tell me how, what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm gonna use these numbers to create a, a flat, uh, two-dimensional representation of what the ring would look like if it were cut into and, and laid out flat. So <clears throat> let me choose my rectangle. Uh, I forgot what that was. Let me look. Uh, open up the 70.5, basically. I'm going to pull this over onto my other screen so it's not in our way here. And the width is 70 point four, well, 0.5 millimeters. And the height is 5 millimeters. So this is, if the ring were flat, this is a good representation of it. Um, I'm gonna 
duplicate this. Control C, Control F to duplicate and Alt and make it a little bit narrower to represent the border that this ring is going to have. Now let's I'm going to give it a half. roughly a half a millimeter on the top and the bottom. So that'll make that four. Zoom in, yeah, that looks like a good border. Okay, so inside this blue rectangle is what I have to work with um, to lay my design out. Normally when I do this design, like I said, it's on a ring that's between eight and 10 millimeters high. So it, it's normally about twice as tall, twice as wide as this band is. We're going to need to divide this up into probably eight segments. I'm sorry if you're having a hard time hearing me over the rain and the thunder. It's starting to really come down now. But I'm going to do a little math and figure out how much 70.5 divided by 8 8.811. One more rectangle. Eight point eight one one and four. Okay, so we'll need eight segments. Duplicate that. Now I'm going to duplicate it That's six more times. C, control F, two, three, four, five, six. So now I have eight, six of which are on top of one another here. And I can just distribute those. this. Uh, the magic of computers. I'm going to group those together and move them down here. So now all I need to do is take that Texican design and put it, put those elements alternatingly in these eight segments and I'll have essentially the same design just on a much smaller scale. And let's see here. Not like that at all. Cut my stroke down to about there. This is why I draw on the computer because all I have to do is hit Control Z to remove what I don't like. If I make a line that I don't like, it's easy to replace it. I don't like that. Don't like that. I don't like this one either, but I think I can fix this. Uh, Okay, I guess this will work. This is just a rough layout. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, let me move these over to their own layer. I'm not trying to get my exact design. I just want some lines that I can, I just want some, a couple of representations that I can copy over Ooh. Controls. Group those. Control C to copy. Control F to paste.
I basically have taken a few minutes here to convince myself that this design is going to fit, it's going to look acceptable, and it's going to be representative of this Texican design, which is what the customer really wanted. So now that I'm satisfied with that, I know that I'm going to need eight segments. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight segments. So I have a, I'm almost yelling to be able to be over this, the sound of this rain here. I have um, a ring segment chart that I have drawn up with concentric circles. Let's zoom in here and I'll show you what I mean. So I have concentric circles here. I can take literally any size ring, <coughs> pardon me, and align it to the, to the perfect center of this and then use these radiating lines from the center to mark off eight segments or seven or six or whatever I'm after. But in this case, I'm going to use this eight segment um, portion of the chart and I'm going to change cameras and get off the computer and show you how that's done. Hopefully the rain will have died down in a minute. Okay, this is simple enough. All I have to do is take the wedding band and place it exactly in the center and I use these concentric circles to help me align that. Make sure I'm exactly where I want to be. Kind of hard with the camera above it there. And then I have just a little scribe that is has a polished point. Um, so I don't scratch the ring. I just make a little burnished mark on it. And then I just go around and mark roughly where these eight segments are. Now I can find only one of the segments. Another way to do this is actually the way that I sometimes do it is take a divider. Now that I have two of these marked, two of these lines marked, just open up the divider until it spans between two of them. You probably can't see this on the video, but I'm touching two of the marks with the two points of the divider. And so I know that I've got the correct distance. And then I can just go around the ring and mark where those segments would continue on around. Um, one way is about as easy as the other, but like I said, without being able to put my big head right between the camera and here, um, it's difficult for me to do using just the paper. I'll put a link in the description of the video below so you can download this ring seg segment uh, chart, and I'll put links uh, to any of the tools that I use as well. Okay, well the rain finally let up a little bit. Still thundering, but maybe you can hear me now. Okay, what I'm gonna do to begin with is to mark my border, and I have a pair of dividers. These are really nice Starrett dividers, um, and I use them all the time. I actually have two, two pair of them, so I can keep one on one, bench and another on the other bench and I'm just going to go around this ring marking the border and you probably won't be able to see it it's very tiny faint line but I'll be able to see it under the microscope so that I can engrave it and what I've done is just kind of eyeballed what I think a, about a half a millimeter is and again, this isn't very scientific. Um, there's not a lot of science involved in engraving. It's very subjective and very much a matter of individual taste. Okay, now I've gone all the way around that side. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And just a minute. 
I'm going to be using this little attachment. This is an inexpensive ring holding fixture. It comes from GRS and I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick one of these up. I also have a very expensive ring holding fixture um, called a, I think it's called a Ring Genie. It costs about a thousand dollars. I'm not going to show using it because most people don't engrave enough uh, rings to be able to adjust to justify having such an expensive tool that's solely for that purpose. But maybe I'll show it in a future video. This uh, is about $75 and it's, um, I use it quite a bit. It does have some advantages even over the Ring Genie, the expensive one that I just mentioned. Um, the way that it works, I guess I should show you, is there's a, there's a frame. It's very, very simple. I like simple tools because I'm a simple guy. So there's a frame that clamps into your vise or your engraver's ball. And then there's a nut and a bolt and these expanding arbors. It comes with about a dozen different sizes of these plastic expanding arbors. And as you tighten the nut to the bolt, then they expand. So, just like so. Very handy little tool to have though. <clears throat> so I'll put my ring on there and kind of line it up. And, oh, I need to turn some air on. I'll be right back. So we'll clamp our ring holding tool. And engraver's block. And then clamp our ring. So to recap, what we've done so far is to confirm that the design that we want will fit the ring laid out in the segments, the number of segments that we've, that we've got laid out. And we've marked each segment and we've marked the border. Now what we'll do is engrave the border. I'm going to be using a 90 degree engraver, single point engraver. This is a Lindsay grind um, from Steve Lindsay. I like his tools. I like his way of thinking about tools and engraving. He's an amazing engraver. And just trying to get my microscope focused so I can see out of both eyes at the same time. The trick here is just to continue to raise the back of the tool, raise the heel of the tool as you go around that arc of the ring. And take your time. Try and be consistent with your power, the amount of air that's driving the tool. And not to get in a hurry, of course, like I almost did there. Almost bit off more than I could chew. All right, our borders are established and now I'm going to use this tiny little scribe, the same scribe that I used to mark the segments to draw those elements um, 
Again, this is a burnisher. I'm not scratching the metal. I'm just burnishing it. It's a very fine, fine point. The last thing you want to do is be scratch, putting a lot of deep scratches on, on this wedding band. There's no need. You can see with magnification, you can easily see your lines. What I essentially have here are two scrolls that are going the same direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise, and they alternate. It's a very, very simple design, but once it's filled in with all of the uh, all the little individual elements, it looks very, very complex. I'm going to switch to a wider graver geometry. This is, uh, I believe, 116 degree graver. Makes a little wider line. And again, I'm not trying to engrave this very deep at this point. And that gives me the ability to gives me the ability to engrave over my faint lines if I have an element that I want to sit under another element then it makes that easier to make that decision in the future I haven't committed to a real deep line here and tucking one element under another element gives a much more appealing three-dimensional look to an engraving. If you just have laid them out flat, one to you know, one next to the other, um, all the way around the ring, it's going to be a very flat, not very lifelike. It's just going to look like a. It's going to look amateurish. So when you lay out your engraving, and I know it's difficult in the beginning, everybody's engravings look flat and two-dimensional at first, but be thinking about what you can do to make your engravings more complex and more lifelike. As I get this line established, you'll see what I mean. going on here as I'm navigating these two radii, the radius that goes this way and the radius that goes this way. Um, and it, it's frustrating at first when you start trying to do this because you're going to slip a lot and you just have to stay with it. It's just something that it's worth staying with and once you get to the point where you're not slipping anymore and people are oohing and aahing over your work even prematurely like moms and wives do or spouses um, it's encouraging but now I have two very faint scroll backbones that are established there's nothing worse than trying to see something very shiny. Focus on something very shiny. But the first scroll is on top of the second scroll. The second scroll is tucked just ever so slightly under the first scroll. And that's going to make, I'm going to start laying in the leaf elements now. That's going to make them look much more lively and much more dynamic than if they were just laid out one next to the other. I always start from, I guess probably almost everyone does, start from the outside of the scroll and work my way to the inside of the scroll. 
and these elements are really really tiny but they're necessarily so because of the limitations of this little five millimeters that I've or probably more like four millimeters that I'm working inside of. I could have simplified the design, but that's not what the customer wanted. And that's not what they're paying for. Okay, let's try this again. You ever get the feeling you're being watched? Well, I just got the feeling that nobody was watching and noticed that my battery had died on the camera, so I don't know how much you have missed. I'm a little more than halfway through the ring right now. So we'll just keep going. Really a shame too because I was just revealing the secret to happiness and uh, how to lose weight without diet or exercise. All these little known things that I was sharing with you I guess are lost now. Well just watch the next video and maybe I'll discuss those things again. You don't want to try this type of engraving with too much tequila under your belt. Just a word for the wise. That's what I hear anyway. And that's about all the sage words of wisdom that I have.
Salut, je m'appelle Jean-Pierre. You recognize me from Paris as if you gone there. Tan skin, dark brown, no blonde hair. I make the ladies tremble like I was a bomb scare. Cigarette between lip. Take a hit and a white wine sip. I wear speedos when I take a dip. And I eat french fries, not chip. Rolling around to my bicycle With a guy in the garlic around my neck Pull over pattern with stripes, not spotted and not checked Never have a different at the beret, is a safe bet I hate your guts, never make me rush I got a lazy strut to make the ladies blush I hate your guts, never make me rush I got a lazy strut to make the ladies blush Always kiss both cheek Go on holiday for 16 week I make sound when I speak like euh, je ne sais pas. Everybody in the audience, play on your accordions. Everybody in the audience, play on your accordions. Now everybody dance, everybody let's dance, let's dance. Like a man from France, like a man from France. Now everybody dance, everybody let's dance, let's dance. Like a man from France, like a man from France. Everybody in the audience. Play on your accordions Everybody in the audience Now everybody dance Everybody let's dance, let's dance Like a man from France Like a man from France Everybody dance Everybody let's dance, let's dance Like a man from France Like a man from France My moustache is paper thin Never have a bare head but raise the thing As I lean upon the bar with a lazy grin Sipping on a white wine is my favorite drink My moustache is paper thin Never have a bare head but raise the thing As I lean upon the bar with a lazy grin Sipping on a white wine is my favorite drink Kiss both cheek Go on holiday for 16 week I make sound when I speak like Au revoir